Hi, this is Doug from Dynamic Computing, and welcome to episode 26 of 10 Minute Amiga Retrocast. This is part two of my Amiga Vision tutorial. Now, last week we created some static images of my 8 bit Commodore computers, and we put them in there, we put some transitions in there. This week I'm putting in a few animations, I'm dealing with brushes and some of the troubles that I came across creating brushes that are going to work and look good on an Amiga 500. And remember, this presentation is playing back on an Amiga 500 with an ACA 500 Plus from individual computers. It has a 16 gig CF card as the primary boot device and a 4 gig CF card that I'm using as an auxiliary device. That's where the presentation is playing off of because I take the presentation back and forth to my different Amigas to test it out, make sure it works on AGA, make sure it works on ECS. And so I put it on the, the card that allows you to transport it. I had a lot of fun creating this presentation. I had to think about what I was going to do to create something for an animation, to represent an animation. So what I did is I took my digital camera, I've got a nice uh, Canon SLR, digital SLR, and I took some pictures on my uh, using my tripod of my Amiga as if it was moving around in a circle. You'll see that on the video here in a second. Then I digitized all that in DCTV and brought it right into the computer. Did the same thing with my Amiga 1200, just a little different video of zooming in and out on an Amiga 1200. Again, just I wanted to create something simple and fast, um, so not bad time-wise. Now, the other fun thing is that I did was I wanted to integrate some actual full motion video into Amiga Vision. Now, Amiga Vision does not support full motion video by any stretch of the imagination, but the Ham 6 videos that I do a lot on my channel. You saw a couple weeks ago the Chocolate Lagoon, the, the bad lip reading video that I did. I thought, well, let's see if we can get those to work. And Amiga Vision has a utility, it has a command to pull in programs and start programs from other sources. And my goodness, it works like a dream playing back those Ham 6 videos. I'm very impressed with how it worked out. And you'll see that here in a few minutes. But for now, let's go ahead and get into the tutorial and take a look at how to create and bring in animations and videos into Amiga Vision. Enjoy. Where we left off last week is we'd finished up the 8-bit portion of the presentation, and now we're moving on to the Amiga portion of the presentation. Now, what I want to do is have a screen where I can choose a button that represents uh, each Amiga that I want to have some information about or a little, little animation about. What I ran into is working with the original chipset. Uh, if I tried to use a ham mode for the background image and then have a, a brush that represented the computer appear, it would mess up the color on the images. It just wouldn't, it just wouldn't work. I could probably do it on my AGA machines okay since I have a lot more colors to work with, a lot more high color modes. But the solution I came up with is I wanted to do a grayscale background with grayscale buttons. So let me show you a little bit about how I did that. First thing I did is I used Ad Pro Art Department Professional to open up my full color image here. Let's just bring it right up. There's the 16 color logo. Now, as you can see here, it's at 724 by 482 pixels and 16 colors. Just for laughs, let's take a look and see what it looks like. So you can see it's just my standard logo that I use as the background of the introduction page of my YouTube channel. But when I tried to bring a brush into here, it would try and import the colors of the brush or it would corrupt the colors of the brush since I'm only dealing with 16 colors. So here's what I did. I took that color image. I went over to the operator command over here and I went color to grayscale, and I just converted it into a nice black and white image, 16 shades of gray, and I did the same thing for the brushes that I created. 
So you see it still looks really good in 16 shades of gray. Now for the brushes, no, let's bring up a 24-bit image. So Add Pro is bringing up a 24-bit uh, color image. In this case, I could convert it into ham mode or I could convert it into 16 color, but I'm going to do grayscale. I'm going to convert that picture into grayscale too. So now we have a nice grayscale picture of my Amiga 500. And I would save that image and bring it into Deluxe Paint. 16, A500, there's the gray image. Once I bring the grayscale image into Deluxe Paint, I want to create a nice small brush out of it that I can use as a brush in Amiga Vision. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the entire screen. Okay, so now I have a, a screen grab, a, a brush of the image, and I'm going to clear the screen. So I'm just playing with a, a grayscale brush, and I'm going to resize it. And basically what I did is I cut the image in half and then I cut the image in half again. Okay, so I have a nice tiny little image there that's going to represent a brush. And then I just went in and I cleaned up the borders so we don't see any of my uh, background on here. Switch to black and just went ahead and cleaned everything up here. Now, once I cleaned the images up and I, I cleaned all the borders up, I went back out, grabbed the image again as a brush and saved it as a brush. So it's saved as a, a grayscale brush. Let me show you what they ended up looking like. So I grabbed my Amiga 1200, my Amiga 500 and an Amiga 4000, touched up the, the borders, got rid of all the extra stuff and then grabbed each one with the, the cut tool. And once I grabbed it, I just saved it as a brush. So then I have a copy of the A1200 brush in gray, A500 and A4000 in gray to go along with my grayscale screen. Now we'll go back to Amiga Vision and I'll show you how I put it all together. So first thing, if you recall, this took the response of A from our previous session and said, okay, he wants to look at the Amigas. We created a new module here. Now we want to figure out what to do with the module. First thing I want to do is put my screen down. So we're going to take my screen, drop it to the lower right of there, just where the arrow shows you. And we're going to call that Amiga logo. We're going to pull up the grayscale logo that I created. 16 color, images, 16. Okay, now we've got 10 mark logo, high res gray. We can take a look, preview it. That's the previous screen. It always pulls up the previous screen to show you what the transitions look like. And then it shows you the grayscale screen. And I think you'll agree, it looks pretty darn good. But we're not done yet. What we want to do is we want to put the brushes on the screen and make the brushes into hotspots that we can click to go to our specific animations. So we're going to just go back and we're going to go to Control. Then we're just going to go back and we're going to go to Wait. We're going to grab, look for mouse clicks like we did before. And we're going to do exclusive clicks. Go into the object editor. It's going to load the, back and, the black and white image. Yay! Now we can bring our brushes in. This down here is the brush tool. 
So we're gonna click on that and we're gonna say, okay, we wanna brush approximately right there. We can click on our select tool, select this. We're gonna call this A500 and pull in our A500 grayscale brush. Brushes. There's A500 brush. All right. We want this to be a cookie cut brush, which means that the, the black background color zero is going to become invisible. And you'll see why when we click that here. Okay. I want to make this a little bit bigger because I've chosen it a little small. There, that's about the right size. Now, when you double click it, I want the response when I click this to be A500. All right, I don't need to change any colors of it in, in, in this particular instance. Now, a slick way to do this, to make sure you get things sized to the proper way, since all my brushes are the same size, is I'll just make a copy of this. And if you remember from last time, that's our copy button. And there's one copy. And there's two copies. Now we can go into each copy and just change the brush image. There's directory, A1200 brush. And we want that response to be 1200, A1200. And we want this to be A4000. I could do for a little resizing on this one. So first I'm going to move it a little. And then I'm going to grab the little edges, just like you'd think, and resize it to get a little bit more of the image in there. That looks good. Now, in that short span of time, we've just put our three brushes in grayscale on here. They're already hit boxes uh, that are already going to send a response to Amiga Vision. Now I want to tell the user what to do on this screen. So I'm going to put a little text up here. And we're going to say please click on the image you want to learn about. Now the colors are going to be wrong here, so let's just fix the colors. I want the text to be white, and I want the background to be, oh, a dark gray. That's fine. Now when I click OK, OK, a little small. Let's make that bigger. We'll do a 20 point CG times font. That's better. Click, please click on the image you want to learn about. All right, now let's exit out of here. Remember, we don't need to save this. It's automatically saved. And we're gonna call this Amiga Choices. The names are always optional, but it certainly helps figure out where you're going here. Now we want to be able to do something with the decisions that we make. So we're going to go back to the main menu. We're going to add a control and then an if then. Functions. Our most popular one is going to be response, although we have a lot of other choices. Response equal to a 500. Then we're going to create a new module, put it right there, call 
that A500 video. And we're going to put our little Amiga 500 video in here. Now, I created this video by taking some pictures with my digital camera and bringing them in via DC TV and then just converting them to ham mode and then just doing a quick little 10 frame, 12 frame ham animation. We drag our animation up icon up there. We're going to double click it, go to our directory. I put it under animations. There is a 500 animation. It's just a quick little dirty animation. All right. Now I can also locate the animation on the screen if I need to, but let's take a look and see how it looks first. So I'm going to click preview. It shows our previous screen and then we'll load up the animation. We a nice little ham mode Amiga 500 spinning around in a circle because why not? Go back to our main screen. The positioning looked fine. That should do for now. Okay, so if we click on the Amiga 500 image, it's going to just go down. If we choose it, it's going to go to this module, play the animation. If not, it's going to check and see if we clicked anything else. Go back to control. If then, if the response equals a1200, grab another module, but doink, grab another animation. And we're going to pull in my Amiga 1200 animation, which is a, just a little different variety. We're going to take a look at that, see if she looks okay. And it zooms in on an Amiga 1200 and zooms out. Nothing too exciting, just something fun. Now, what I want to do with this, since that's a shorter animation, I want it to repeat that two times. So I'm going to click loop. I'm going to choose two. And now if we were to preview it, it would actually zoom in and out on the Amiga 1200 two times. So now we've taken care of our 500 and our 1200. Now I did something special for the Amiga 4000. And let's put this in. And this is going to be something brand new. If the response equals a 4000. What I did here is I took an actual video with my video camera of the Amiga 4000 and just a little quick bit of information, it's like 50 seconds long, and I converted it into one of the Ham 6 videos that I've shown you before, like I did uh, the other week on the, the, the Choco Lagoon that I converted from bad lip reading. I created one of those videos and brought it over here and it ended up working pretty good. but. Those aren't traditional animations at all. They are completely, totally different, and they did not exist when the Amiga was being manufactured. There we go. So how do you bring something in that is completely not compatible with Amiga Vision? That is where this option comes into play. System, execute. And this is so fantastic. What it does, this allows you to pull in anything from anywhere on the Amiga that either launches from the workbench or launches from the um, CLI or even launches from AREX. So for example, if you wanted to play uh, a mod file, well, Amiga Vision doesn't support mod files. You could have it actually call up Octomed, for example, and play back a mod file. And we're going to just show you how to do that. The dollar sign is actually pretty accurate. This thing got so expensive. Now this is going to be a CLI application that I launch and I don't need to search for it because I know where it's at. C colon ham new 
not run. And if you've seen me do any of the videos previously, this is the, the program that you can download from my website that will play back HAM6 animations. Then the location is on XFER 500 colon 10 mark 16. video a4000.h6v. This is literally just like you're typing it into the CLI. The program name, then the information about the location of the program, and you can even put anything at the end if you have particular options that you need to set. For example, on my Amiga 4000, I tested it with the Riva program to playback MPEG files works great. All right, so we're going to click OK there. So now we have created our three responses for our Amiga choices. But when this response screen comes up, we want it to automatically kick back to the gray screen and choose another choice if you want to. So for example, we, we could click on Amiga 500, it plays the animation, then goes back to the screen and asks us, well, do you wanna look at the 500, the 1200, or the 4000? And we're also gonna need a way to break out of that loop. First of all, let's just create a way to break out of the loop. Amiga Choices, Object Editor, open up our image. And we did this part last week where we created just a little text box here. And we're going to go into that text box. Uh, let's make it a bigger font. Let's do a 30 point font. And we're going to call it back to main as in the main menu and we'll give the response of back I'm not going to like the color so let's fix the colors we'll do black letters for normal on a light background here and then when we select it we'll do the light background on the black so now let's just test it, make sure that works. Preview. Yep. So now we've got our new button that when we click it, it gives us the response back. So let's put that in here. So what we wanna do is we want to first put in our new option to end and go back to the beginning of the presentation. So let's do another if then. If the response is equal to back. Then we're going to go to this module here and we're going to call this back to start. And if we click the end button there, the back button, what it's going to do is it's going to go to, and then remember like last week, we click this to, and we then tell it where it's going to go to. It's gonna go all the way back to the beginning, this intro page. And I'll give you an example of this in a second. Now we also want it, if we click one of these and watch the video to automatically go back to the gray screen that gives us our choices. So we're going to put a go to down here. So no matter what, after we watch one of our videos, it's going to automatically cycle back to the grayscale screen unless we choose to do otherwise. I hope that makes sense. Let's take a look and see how it works. Okay, 
We've already did our 8-bit prawn last week, so let's do Amiga prawn. This should now switch over and give us a nice grayscale screen. Yep. And it gives us our choices. Please, please click in the image. Blah, blah. Please click on the image you want to learn about. We'll do the A500 first. It should load up our animation there. Ah, look here. We need to take out the pointer. Okay, now it'll go back to the gray screen and we'll learn about the A1200. Now, of course, in a real presentation, you're going to have information about these computers here. You know, maybe the specifications of it, maybe what I have in it. But again, we're just learning how to do this. Played it twice. Back to the main screen. Now watch this. This is going to call up the ham new program to play back an actual video file. And here's my Amiga 4000, which is eternally without its top on. Number one, for cooling reasons, and number two, because I'm always tinkering inside of it. Now, she is an 060 running at 80 megahertz with a warp engine with about 116 megabytes of RAM total. She's got a VLAB motion card, which is the top one here. Underneath there, she has an XSurf 100 with a Rapid Road USB, and then we have a nice cyber graphics 64 card in there and lastly we have the AD 516 16-bit audio card that I do a lot of my audio work with this thing is incredibly fast and I'm very happy with this one and as soon as it's done with the presentation it will put you right back into Amiga Vision and we're ready to go pretty cool huh now if we click back to main it should bring us back to the main menu with our nice color display and our options. Okay, now let's fix bye -bye. real quick bye -bye. the pointers. We don't want these pointers to appear. Now in an animation, removing the pointers is in a different area. So we'll go to the A500 animation. Now we have to go to override settings and pointer. And that'll just make the pointer go away. We'll do the same thing here, override, pointer, no pointer. We don't like, we don't like pointers. Now we'll just quickly put a video here under the, the video playback. If response equals V, that's perfect. Then we're gonna do the same thing here. Execute a file. We're going to call this one inventory video. And we're going to call up the same program. Have new dot run. And then this is under XFER 500. inventory.h6v okay so this will then just very 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 simply play back an inventory video i created that i'll show you here too then when it's done playing that it will go back to the main screen but we can do the we could do the same thing if we had multiple videos we could create a nice little structure and say, you know, here's a video of this, here's a video of that, and have it call up each video in turn. Now, this is not something you would have done on an original Amiga 500 back in 1991 or 1992, okay? Because some of these videos are huge. Like the, just this inventory video I'll show you is 80 megabytes, and the A4000 video is like 40 megabytes. You're not going to be filling up your hard drive with these videos and certainly not disturbing it on floppies. But because we live in a completely different day and age and we can put four gig or 16 gig or 32 gig CF cards in our machine, it's suddenly not a problem. And it's really cool that the Amiga can handle it and handle it so fluidly, even though the technology didn't really even exist back in 91 or 92. So let's take a look at that video. I've got two 
two video toasters, a toaster 4000 and a toaster 2000. Octagon SCSI card does not work. Uh, also has slots for 8 megs of RAM and it's just simply not recognized by anything. So I, I'm going to play with that. Some completely worthless Ethernet cards that just use the old style uh, connector right there. Now there, nice Picasso 2 RTG card that went in the A2000. Uh, Zorro 2, so it's a little on the slow side. It's my slowest RTG card out of the three I own, but it works fine. Here we've got uh, my three A3640 cards, of which only one of them seems to work. The other two, you know, they, they, just, they just don't boot. Uh, here is a Blue Ribbon Soundworks uh, one-stop music shop. Here is an implant board with no chips whatsoever on it. Uh, now here, these are fun. The bottom one is a bridge board. This is a uh, 386 SX uh, Commodore bridge board. has sockets on it for up to, I believe, 8 megabytes of RAM. And this goes along with it. This is an ISA card, ISA card. And it has video, it has a hard drive interface, uh, has a floppy interface, has serial, has parallel. Uh, man, I searched far and wide for a card that would add all the capabilities I needed to run Windows in one ISA slot. Then it takes us right back to our main screen and we can go through and click anything else. We could look at our 8-bit again, we could look at our, at our Amiga videos again, the video tour, or we could Bye -bye. click End. This is not, of course, all that Amiga Vision can do. This whole thing, this whole presentation, you can see it right there, is not that long and not that complicated. This is using some of the simpler options, but still very, very powerful. We can do other things like create subroutines that can go down and call. You can do other things like pull up data from like a database or create a database. If you want to enter text and use it to store information, you can absolutely create modules that do that. We won't be getting into that at this point in time. So I hope you enjoyed the training session. I hope you enjoyed the little presentation. I had a lot of fun creating it. And now back to Douglas. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. It was a lot of fun creating. There's so much more that I could have done, of course, you know, put in some, some dialogue about what each computer has in it, what components it has in it, in text form, in video form, in, in speech form. But then this 10 minute video <laughs> would become 45 minutes long doing all that. So I just wanted to do something quick and fun, but I'll probably expand out in the future and maybe I'll, I'll show it off in the future once, once I get it completed. Now, other ideas that I have for Amiga Vision. I was thinking of an interactive, almost like an interactive novel, interactive uh, video experience where you can take a series of still images, take a series of maybe the ham six videos and actually tell a story and give the user options. Okay. Do you want to go left? Do you want to go right? Do you want to go forward? And then Amiga vision goes to a different picture, goes to a different video and plays the story out. I think it'd be kind of fun. And you know why? Cause we can, and it's fun and it's, something we can do with our Amigas. But uh, so I may work on that. And then of course I'll, I'll present it to you if I get that finished. But for now, if you have any ideas of what you think we could do with Amiga Vision, please let me know in the comments. I'd love to experiment with it. If you have questions on how anything was done, I've usually covered that in previous videos or I'll cover it in a future video. Send me a message. Uh, you can find me on Facebook. You can find me on Twitter at, at 10 mark one on Twitter. Uh, you can also find me uh, on my website at www.10mark.com. So get in touch with me, ask me any questions you need. But until next time, this is Doug from 10 Minute Amiga Retrocast signing out. Say bye bye, Amiga. Bye bye, Amiga. <laughs>